everyone, I hope you are doing well. My name is Aneta and welcome to my art channel. Today I would like to show you the process behind these four traditional pieces I made and share some thoughts on how to progress with your art. The first piece you'll see in this video is titled Crystal. In order to make this piece, I used as reference one of the sculptures found on Pinterest by Gosha Bold, who is an amazing modern sculptor and makes art that really speaks to me. And that is something that I really cherish, as I'm not really fond of the modern art movement of these days. You know, I'm looking at you, banana. Lately, I found myself stuck with my creative process and I spent a lot of time thinking on how to get out of it, how to break from the spiral of negative thoughts, especially if you are someone who is not doing art only for the sake of having purely fun. I definitely want it to have an important role in my life. It is not just a tool to express myself, although it is important to me, I myself don't feel that important to the world and yet I would like to give some positive energy and share what I think might be beautiful. Saying this, I find myself sometimes overwhelmed with the amount of inputs I receive and even positivity in a large dose can be toxic. The road to improve your art can be very bumpy and it's not just rows and rainbows. So my view on that can be harsh sometimes, but maybe this is something that I need and hopefully you find it useful as well. So these are my three takeaways that I wrote myself down. Number one, be smart about your comfort zone. You don't need to make a huge leap of faith by changing the subject from, for example, drawing girls to drawing cars. This will never work if you are forcing yourself to draw something you don't like or understand nor feel. Once you settle down what your priorities are, the next step will be to acknowledge that nope, you probably don't have your own style yet and you need to figure out your weak points. These weak points are usually errors your brain is not able to see yet. For example, you learn how to draw arms in a certain way and you feel that there is something not quite right with them, you can continue on drawing them the same way or you can grab some anatomy books and fill a few pages with sketches of studies. This way you will slowly but surely teach your brain what is the right way to draw and in a short amount of time you will notice some progress. The second piece you see it's called Unicorn and was I fully happy with it? Hell no! <laughs> there are fragments I like and I'm not one of these artists who is completely negative about their art but I think I would draw her legs differently now and the horse would require a thorough anatomy research as well. There is something that feels a bit wonky about it and I wouldn't call it a strong composition. My number two is don't be too hard on yourself, but avoid being too forgiving as well. I often find myself feeling down because I repeat the same pose or I cannot convince myself to use a more complex perspective and as a result I get angry with myself and these are the moments when art blog kicks in. Surely this is not the right way to process things, however I'm not able to tell myself it's okay not to, you know. It's okay to take breaks, it's okay to focus your attention on something else, it's okay to relax, but too many it's okay are not okay. 
and I'm tired of seeing posts on Instagram which are telling you to slow down because sometimes you don't need that break at all and yet you look for excuses to procrastinate. Once you enter that rabbit hole, it's usually over for quite some time. You lose your train of thoughts that motivated you, you lose the rhythm and before you know an entire month or year will fly by and you won't get anything done. It's a tough balance to keep and trust me, I've been there. Number three, which is a consequence I believe of number two, is to take a break from social media. I know this is quite an obvious one and I'll probably repeat what many people say, but social media, especially if you follow people from a specific niche, can be so discouraging and not inspiring at all. You start comparing yourself, you dedicate a precious few hours on scrolling through your feed, lying to yourself that you are just looking for some inspiring ideas while you are just wasting your time. Instead of figuring out your own creative process, you're ending up overwhelmed with the amount of different styles and too much information which might lead you to some negative thoughts. It's like being surrounded by this constant noise which instead of motivating you it pulls you down. Instead of that what I actually would do is to use art books instead. I know this is a time-taking journey because they can be expensive at times, you can't just buy 20 books at once, or maybe you can, I don't know. Personally, I started my own collection a few years ago and these are way better than scrolling through social media. They give you just the right amount of information to inspire you, you can see images on a bigger format, you can see all these details that you might incorporate in your own art, and overall you can create the right atmosphere to get into that creative mood. I still think there is a certain magic that surrounds physical things like books or traditional drawing media. The next prompt was Fairy, and in this piece I exaggerated her body proportions, especially the torso and her legs. She was supposed to look like a forest mythical creature, and now when I look at her I could have had some more details. There was still room for that. Also, I'm not quite sure whether her anatomy looks good.
But not least for this series, the prompt tattoo. I must say, I really like how I made her hair. I like the idea and shapes and I might try to redraw this at some point because I'm not happy with her anatomy. Her neck is too long, her bone structure is a bit messed up, same for arms, but this can serve as an example of what I told you before. I tempted myself too much with being too casual with my drawing and I ended up disappointed. I can blame the fact that this was done for a series of drawings, but even if so, was my approach correct? Now if I think about it, it was not. But I'll keep this for another video. I would like to tell you what I actually learned while making drawing challenges. This is all I have for this episode, I hope you enjoyed, I would be curious to hear your thoughts on your daily art struggles, maybe you disagree with me, maybe you have a different opinion on this subject, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please leave me a like and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time, ciao!